Okay, gang, welcome to HomeAccordingMadeEasy.com and here on the YouTube channel in this video, this is the follow-up video to the video I did. You probably just saw it, I'll link it in the description box below this week on the Slate Digital Solid State Logic Complete Access Pass and the Black Friday deal and all of that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, click the link in the description box. If you're watching this between November 20th and November 28th, 2023, you're gonna get a really special deal. If you're watching this after November 28th, have no fear, you still have access or still have the opportunity to get this bundle package. Um, check the link in the description box below, go out to Slate Digital's website and get all the particulars. But in that last video I talked about, I wanna show you some of my favorite Solid State Logic Native and Slate Digital plugins that I use all the time and have been using for many, many years. And it's why, how great they sound, how to quickly use them, get up and get running and use something quickly or get something that sounds good quick and um, how easy they are to use. So you can check them out for yourself, see how they sound, and then you can go out to their website and you can pick up this bundle. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So make sure you like, share, subscribe and all of that. Let's jump into this. So before we get started, I'm gonna just turn off all the plugins. I'm gonna walk you through some of my favorite plugins here. And then we're gonna mix a little bit of drums, a little bit of bass, acoustic guitar, piano. We're just gonna throw something together quick so you can see how these plugins work. Um, and then you can dig them and you can uh, check them out and you can go to Slate Digital's website. So here's the piece of music we're gonna be working with. It's an instrumental, kind of a country rock. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we're dealing with. Cool tune, nice little uh, nice little thing you can get up and start moving to. Well recorded, sounds great. So let me walk you through. I just picked a handful of these plugins that I use all the time, but there isn't a bad plugin in either one of these bundles. And when you get them as part of this complete access pass, you're, you're rocking and rolling. So if, if uh, you wanna check these out, go out to Slate Digital's website, as I said, you're gonna download their plugin manager and their plugin manager is called Slate Digital Connect when you sign up. And that's how you're gonna download all your plugins. And here's a little app that lives on your desktop and you'll see all the plugins on the left and right hand side. And you're gonna be able to scroll down, install and update and keep all your plugins updated, which is really great. It's all part of the Slate ecosystem. It works beautifully. It's super, super simple to do. Once you have your plugins installed, regardless of the DAW that you're using, we're using Studio One here, you'll see them in the browser here. Uh, they'll live under the Slate Digital folder as well as I believe the SSL folder. Here we go, okay? Every DAW is gonna be a little different, but that's where they are in Studio One. Let me show you how I have this little session set up. Let's start with the master bus and work our way back, okay? So right now they're all turned off, obviously. We'll turn them on here and then we'll, we got some of them that are muted. So on the master bus, we're gonna start with our SSL Fusion. Okay, so I've done some videos on these SSL Fusion plugins in the past. You can search my archive. They're fantastic plugins. I actually own the hardware. The hardware sounds fantastic as well. And these plugins are very, 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 very close to the hardware. They are, I did a whole video on that as well. You can search that out. We're gonna start with the Violet EQ. Then from the Violet EQ, we're gonna go to the SSL native SSL G-Series bus compressor, which is an amazing sounding compressor. You're gonna get a chance to hear this. Then from there, we're gonna route our signal to the vintage drive, which is another part of the Fusion. The Fusion has five models in it, five modules in it. We're gonna go to the vintage drive. Then we're gonna go to the SSL Fusion transformer circuit. And then we're gonna follow it up with the Slate Digital Virtual Tape Machines. Now I own lots of tape machine plugins. This is the one I use all the time. I've been using it for years. If you've been watching me on YouTube, or if you take any of my training courses, and all those links will be in the description box below, you've seen me use this tape machine 10 million times, okay? Yes, 10 million, I said. And then from there, we're gonna go to the SSL Fusion Stereo Imager, okay? Now, again, part of this all access pass, or complete access pass, excuse me, with the new bundles between these two companies, these plugins, the SSL Fusion plugins alone, regular price when they first came out were $200 each. They're part of the all, the complete access pass now. You get them for free when you sign up, right? Even when these things are on sale, they're on sale for 25 to 50 bucks a piece. 
That's like two years worth of your membership over at SlateDigital.com. Just keep that in mind. These things sound awesome. You're going to hear them. Okay, that's our master bus chain. What we're going to do here for this mix is we're just going to use a couple of the plugins. And if you want me to do some more Slate Digital SSL Native Complete Access Pass mixing with different plugins and varieties, let me know in the comments below. I'll do another one. But here's something that you can get really quickly. On all of our tracks here, every single track, we're going to start off with my favorite the VCC, which is part of the VMR, VMR, the virtual mix rack, we're going to use the virtual console collection. Love the VCC, okay? We're going to be using an SSL channel strip, which I'm going to show you in a second. This VCC is awesome. It's got six console emulators. I love the Brit 4KE. We're going to use that on all our tracks. And then from there, we're going to go over to the new, in the last year, SSL native 4KB channel strip. This thing is killer. Now, in the complete access pass, you get all the SSL native plugins. As I said, you're going to get two, three different channel strips. We can look at those in different videos, but this one's awesome. The 4KB, which is the predecessor to the E series and G series consoles back in the early 80s. And they sound fantastic, okay? Someone like myself who actually has a real SSL sitting off screen, off camera here, you just can't see it. I can tell you these plugins sound killer, very, very close to the original. SSL console. So that's what we're going to do on all the tracks here. So you see, we just got two plugins, just got two plugins. We get down here, we're going to use our drum bus. We're going to, we're going to route all our drums to the drum bus and we're going to use get another one of my favorites. I use this all the time. The FG gray by Slate Digital. This is their emulation of the SSL bus compressor VCA style. You're going to dig this. Okay. That's going to be our drums. For reverbs, we're going to use the Slate Digital Verb Suites Classic. Again, one of my favorites. All these things I've been using for years. I love the Verb Suites Classics. We're going to check that out. Then on our base, we're going to use, again, we're going to use the Virtual Console. We're going to use the 4KB. Same thing with acoustic guitar. Same thing with piano. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is let's just solo up a kick drum here. Let's just solo things up here in solo. Let me show you how quickly it is to kind of dial something that sounds good. I'm going to keep all the master bus plugins off for now. We'll add those at the end so you can hear the accumulative effect of what these plugins do. And we're going to dial something in pretty quickly to show you how good this stuff really sounds. Here we go. So let's get a let's get a kick going here. I'll turn it up so you can hear it. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the virtual console. Now, the way I like to use this plugin is pretty simple. I like to link the input and the output. So as I turn up the input, the output will turn down. So we can level match the plugin. That's super important. So we're going to do that. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to drive this a little bit. We're going to drive this up to about 12 and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to make it. So the needles kind of hit around zero. There we go. Something like that. Now we're going to come over to our 4KB. We'll quickly walk through this. On the left-hand side, we have our low-pass and high-pass filters. Then we have our EQ section down here on the left, okay, which is kind of cool. In the middle here, we have our input trim to regulate the, uh, the volume coming into the plug-in. And then we can also use the mic or a line uh, preamp. So we could turn on the preamp. If we want to use the preamp to get some distortion or the line level here. We have our output fader here in the uh, in the center here. We can mute it or we can solo it, right? You can see. And then over here on this side, we have our compressor here. We have our ratio, a threshold, and a release, okay? There's no attack time on this old 4KB um, compressor. This is a more simplified compressor, which turned into the famous SSL bus compressor that you uh, see in all the consoles. It started with this simple 4KB compressor. And then we also have a gating down here and we could turn the dynamics on and off here, okay? We have a way that we can route the signal flow. Right now it goes from the EQ to the filters to the dynamic section. That's how the audio travels through the plugin. But if you wanna rearrange that, you can do that by clicking these little arrows. So let's say we want our filters to go first. We're gonna filter it, then we're gonna EQ it, then we're gonna put the compressor. Or you can put the compressor after the dynamics, or you can put the dynamics before the filters, whatever you want, okay? But you can do that. And then down here, we have a bunch of presets. And I will say, and we'll check these out just so you can see them in a little bit all the different presets they have by instruments. And you should check those out because those are good starting points if you're someone new to mixing. Okay, so let's just start on the default. Let's go ahead and let's just dial in this kick drum.
Okay, so let's turn in, a, let's dial in a little bit of low end. We can use a bell for a shelf or a shelf uh, curve here. Okay, just a little bit of EQ, pull out a little bit of 460 to pull out some of that woofiness. Add a little bit at about uh, 6K here to get a little bit of the slap and a little bit at 61 Hertz. Let's just bypass that and hear what that's just doing on its own. Nice little kick drum sound before we even get to any kind of compression. Let's turn on the gate here. Let's see if we can gate out some of that snare because that snare's a little bit in the way. Pretty effective gate without it. With it. Pretty good, right? You will never get all the bleed, but in this particular case, the snare is almost as loud as the darn kick drum. So we want to gate some of that out. We want to add a little bit of compression. Let's do a little bit of compression on the drums. Let's start like at a two to one. We want to do a light amount of compression because we don't want to get rid of the punch of the transient too much, but let's just see what this does here. Just a couple of dBs. See that light? That's all we want. Okay, so we went from this To that. Not bad. Okay, that's the kick in mic. Let's go to the kick out mic. I'll move a little bit faster now because now you got the layout of the plugin. Okay, so let's check this out. Okay, so once again, we're going to go ahead, we're going to group the IO. I'm going to turn this up. Oops. I mean, link the IO. Sorry, my, my bad. So when the Okay, let's start with the gate here. Let's see if we can get rid of some of that, some of that noise there. Some of that, again, some of that bleed. There we go. Let's dial in some low end. We'll put it on the bell again. Okay, so from this, to that, let's add the other kick drum back in. Snare, here we go. We're gonna move fast now.
Okay, so just using the console collection, the VCC, just to kind of drive things a little bit, give it a little bit of that console flavor and pair it up with a channel strip works really, really well. We'll see, we're gonna bypass all the plugins in a couple of seconds, but there's the snare top and here's the snare bottom. So let's go ahead and let's move our filters here. Again, we're just doing this quick. So let's just do a little bit of a low cut. Okay, a little bit of 5K there, a little bit of a low cut. That's all we really need to do there. Let's add a little bit of compression. Again, we'll go two to one ratio. Can you hear how much that compressor, re compressor really uh, extends the sustain of the bottom snare? Now, again, we wanna turn down this fader because we wanna level match the plug-in before and after. This uh, original compressor back from the early days, they didn't have an automatic gain where it would turn the gain automatically down when you increase the volume because you're getting more compression. So you wanna do that manually, so you kind of level match it, but that's pretty close. Adds a little crack to that snare. So let's turn that down a little. We're picking up a little bit of hi-hat or a little bit of snare in that hi-hat, which is kind of cool. So the way I like to use these SSL dynamic compressors on the channel strips and even on the real consoles, I just like to tickle it about three dB or so, not too much, just to liven it up, brighten it up, tighten up the performance. That's it. A little goes a long way with these channel strips. Now every channel strip's going to act a little different, but on this particular one, the four KB, that's the case because that's the way the console really used to behave. Okay, so there's our kick, snare, hi-hats. Let's just bypass just those plugins. I'll turn them all on and all off so you can hear the difference. Here's with them on. Off. Hear how much more lively, much more present, thumpy everything gets, which is a quick little dial in. Now, before we go to the toms and the overheads, or the toms, let's go to the overheads. Let's listen to those. Okay, now I'm gonna solo this up. So for the demons, for demonstration purposes, for some of our new mixers here, you typically wanna do this in the context of the mix. Now, if you wanna learn more about mixing in really dirty detail, especially if you're new or semi-new to mixing, check out the links in the description box. Go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I have courses for beginners, intermediates, advanced, professional level, and everything in between. So check those out. But we're gonna do this in solo, just so you could hear this and hear what's going on here with the plugins. So on overheads, especially overheads like this, a lot of people will use a, 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 a low cut filter and just try to bring out the cymbals. I don't like to do that. The overhead is the picture of the entire drum kit. So I wanna hear the snare. I wanna hear some of the kick drum. I wanna hear the cymbals. I don't wanna to go too crazy by doing too much of a low pass 
uh, our low cut filter here. So I'm only going to 150 hertz. So I'm letting a little bit of that snare and stuff kind of bring in. And then in the mid range, if you don't know, drums usually have that boxy kind of a kind of a sound between four and 500 hertz. So I'm always taking out about three dB or so. Here we are taking about five dB at 520 hertz. Okay, so here's before the EQ moves. After. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of compression. Now, I don't wanna compress too, too much on this. That's why we're only doing two to one, because I don't want the cymbals to get too, too splashy in the mix. So again, we're just gonna, just gonna tickle that 3 dB LED. Okay, what a difference. They just sound great. The combination of that VCC along with that channel strip just sounds great. Okay, let's go to our rooms now. We'll solo those up so you guys can hear those. Okay, so we got a nice nice thump from the kick drum in there. We're gonna try to enhance that a little bit. Let's first do our VCC. Yeah, so I added a little bit of low end in there, right? Because when we blend it with the rest, let's blend it with our, uh, we got our kick snare and our hi-hats before we get to our toms here and go to our overheads. Let's just kind of blend this in and see what it sounds like. So we're adding a little bit of that drum room sound that blends in really nice. I don't think he hits the toms too much in this. So he does hit him a few times. So let's go to the tom here. We got tom one. Okay, so let's just go here. Oh, he's already got a lot of, uh, doesn't need a lot of VCC there. So let's go back here. Let's just do a quick little dial up here before we play it. So we're gonna roll off around 90 Hertz or so. Again, drums, we're gonna take out around that 450, 500 Hertz range. Again, just to move kind of quick. So we're not here all day long. We're gonna uh, pull down the master a little bit here. We're gonna do two to one ratio. We're gonna hit a little bit of compression. We're gonna change our filters here and let's just see what that kind of sounds like. Here it comes. Good, good. Okay, now let's go with our uh, floor tom here. Same thing. Okay, so we got a big spike there. So we're gonna use our trimmer plug-in to turn down some of that a little bit because that floor time's kind of heavy. Here we go. So there we go. So we're good, we're good there. Also wanna make sure that we uh, group all our VCCs together and I'll show you why in a minute. And then we're going to use we're going to use some uh, some presets on the next set of instruments, just so you guys could kind of hear some of the presets here. Okay. Oops, we don't want to be group one. Group one. Okay, there we go. Group one. Okay, so here we go. So here's our floor tom. Let's open up our our four KB. Again, we're going to do a little bit of a roll off, not too much on this one. Okay, we're gonna pull out some of that four to 500. Again, we're just gonna kind of pre-dial it just to get it moving kind of quick. We're gonna do a little bit of compression here again, not too much. 
Let's see what we got. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna go down to our drum bus. Okay, drum bus, we got the FG Gray. This is the SSL VCA style. Here we go. We're gonna go two to one ratio here. We're gonna do a fast release. We're gonna do a slow attack. And we're just gonna dial up a little bit of compression. Not too much, just to kind of kiss the needle. Why? Because we're doing a little bit of compression on all the individual tracks on, on those 4KB channel strips. We don't wanna squash the drums too much because we want the punch of the drums. Okay, if you wanna learn more about compression, again, go out to Home Recording Made Easy. You got a whole course, Compression Made Easy. You'll really, really dig it. Okay, so we got a little bit of compression there. Sounds wonderful. Okay, so now let's go to our drum verb. We're gonna route all these to a drum verb or send all of these to a drum verb. Not kick so much, but we're gonna send the snare over to the drum verb and we will make sure we do it post fader and we're gonna do that on the snare top, the snare bottom, the hats. We'll do the toms and we'll do a little bit of the overheads here as well. And we're gonna pick something really cool. We're just gonna pick a preset. They got some wonderful presets here in the Slate's Verb Suites Classic. I love this thing, I use it all the time. Drums, go to something called Drums Room. Where is it? Drum, realistic full drum rooms one. It's a live club kind of a sound. And then we're gonna use this fader and we're just gonna bring it in. Let's hear it. Sounds great, you can dial it into taste. Let's go on to bass. Let's pick a bass preset now for our 4KB. Let's listen to our bass. Okay, so we're pegging the needles there. We don't wanna be doing that. We got an aggressive bass here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to pull this back a little on the trimmer. Let's go to our presets down here. Let's get a bass out. We got a lot of cool bass presets. Let's do a modern bass sound. Why not? Let's try that. So you see how you can just pick a preset and you can just tweak it to your liking from there. But one thing I will say, a lot of plugin companies, usually the presets are kind of lousy, but the two companies that I've always said have really usable presets, certainly Slate and SSL. Um, other companies, some of them do, most of them don't. That's why I don't like teaching using presets because most of them don't sound good, but these usually sound really good. And this one, it does. Let's just roll with it. Let's pick a preset for the acoustic and let's see how that sounds. I've never used their acoustic presets. Here it is, acoustic guitar. Let's just see. Sounds pretty good, but here's one of the, here's a place where I would maybe uh, tweak this a little. Let's add a little more compression because it's aggressive. So let's add a little more compression. And then let's brighten this up a little bit more. Okay, 
saying, now on this acoustic, maybe we want to add a little bit of reverb. Well, instead of using a send, what we can also do is you can use a reverb as an insert. And people go, oh my God, you can't do that, Dave. That breaks all the rules. Nobody does that. Of course you can. Why? Because we have what's called the wet dry knob here on the Verge Fleets Classics. So when you're using it as a send, you would put the wet dry knob at 100% wet, right? And send to it and then use the fader on the reverb to dial in how much you want. On an insert, you can just put it last in your inserts uh, effects and then you can just use the wet dry knob. Usually around 10, 15% is usually enough. Let's listen to this in solo so you can hear it. So let's pick a nice little, another one of these cool presets. Let's go to guitar, acoustic guitar booth. Great. We'll turn it up so you can hear it. That's too much, right? Little slap back. You got a width control here, which is really good. A little chorusing control if you want. We can even dial in a little bit of pre-delay if we want. Okay, maybe like 10 milliseconds or so. Something like that happened, there we go. Bring it into the mix, see how it sounds, because that's all that matters. How does it sound in the mix? Last one, piano, here we go. a piano preset why don't we the other one sounded good let's see what they sound like so i encourage you when you get this bundle the all axis go ahead and get the start playing around with some of these things la electric keyboard the pimp my felt piano or just piano just piano let's solo it up let's see Sounds fine. It's fine. Sounds good. Let's roll. Okay, we're gonna pick the same uh, Verb Suites classic, but this time maybe we can either pick we could pick a different preset. If you want to use different reverbs for your different instruments, you can do that, or you could pick the same preset and you could put everything kind of in the same space. It's really up to you. I'm gonna pick a different one here. I'm gonna pick a piano plate. And again, we're gonna keep it around 16% and let's see what that sounds like. Let's go ahead and solo it up. Not too much. Maybe that's a little much. Can you could dial it into taste? Here we go, let's bring it in. Rock and roll, right? Now let's get to our master bus here and then we're gonna turn everything on and off. So remember I had all these in bypass, all our fusion plugins, cause I want you to hear what these things sound like one at a time quickly. Now here's our EQ, in case you feel like you need a little bit of EQ on your master bus. We always can use a little bit of EQ on our master bus. So why don't we go ahead, uh, we can uh, turn on the fat switch cause we love fat, right? So let's do that. Let's add a tiny bit of 30 Hertz here, just a couple of DB and let's add a little bit of 20 K just a few dB, just to see what that does. Here we go. So you hear a little bit of that low thickness, that real subsonics underneath that kick drum and a little bit of brightness on the top. And again, you can dial it into taste however you want. Now let's go from there to our bus compressor here. Again, this is by, this is uh, similar to the FG grade. This is one of the um, SSL ones. So again, my a standard, uh, my standard settings for a bus compressor here is gonna be somewhere around a 10 millisecond attack. We're gonna do a two to one ratio or a one and a half to one ratio, whatever you like. We're gonna do auto release. 
We're not gonna use the side chain filter, 100% wet dry. Let's just use the threshold and we just wanna kinda of tap the needle a little. Kinda of like that. Now, a lot of times I'll use the side chain filter because I don't want anything below, I don't want the kick drum to really kind of hit this too much. So anything around 60 hertz is a good, good place to start. And now you'll see there's no compression because the kick drum is not triggering the compressor. That's what we want. Because I want that thumpness and that thickness and that attack of the kick. Sounds wonderful. Let's move on to the next plugin. Next plugin is, oh, you're gonna love this one. This is the saturation, the vintage drive. The one on the hardware is unbelievable. This thing is pretty darn close as well. Check this out. Just by turning it on and off without even touching anything on the plugin. Listen to what we're doing. Here's what it off. I'm gonna kick it in. Just adds a little bit of grit, a little bit of color there. Again, if you can't really hear that, because it is a subtle effect and it should be, you got to tune your ears to it. And again, this is what I do in a lot of my training courses. Again, I'll link everything in the description box. Go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. You can always send me an email through the website if you're not sure what course is right for you, depending on where you are in your mixing journey. But we talk in more detail about this stuff. But this thing sounds wonderful for my students that are watching that could hear the subtleties. Let's go to the transformer now. Same thing. Let's turn on that transformer. Let's just see what it does. For all my beginners, I just want you to listen to the snare drum. Just listen to the crack of the snare as I turn this on and off. You'll hear that little subtle difference. Here's what it off. Just listen to the snare. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the famous virtual tape machine by Slate. This is two tape machines in one. You have the 16, uh, 16 track, two inch multi-track tape machine, and then you also have the master bus half inch. We're gonna use the master bus half inch for now. We're gonna keep it on 30 ips per second. I'll show you the difference in a second. So listen to the kick drum, especially listen to the bass guitar, listen to the low end bump or the low end boost that you get from tape, not by slamming it, but by hitting it right up around zero, maybe a little bit more. Um, listen to that. Just listen to the, the low end of the, of, the, of the music here and you'll hear what tape does. And you have your choice between 30 inches per second or 15. Again, for people that are not aware, 30 ips a second, you're gonna see the reels on the on the plug-in, the tape machine reels are spinning faster. You're gonna get a little bit of less compression. It's gonna be a little bit more punchy. You're gonna hear a little bit more of the kick transient and the snare cut through. Conversely, 15 ips is gonna slow the tape down. And what is that gonna do? That's gonna round off the transient on the kick and the snare a little bit more. Might be something that you like. It all depends on your flavor and the style of music. So let's start with 30 and I'll flip back and forth just so you can hear the difference. Here we go.
little more popping when you go to 30. Last plugin, we have the Imager. It's another great plugin by, by SSL. It's gonna give us a little bit of space. Now we don't have a full mix here. We got lots of panning going on. So this is gonna be a little bit more subtle. This is a small session, but just to give you a feel for what this is gonna do here, let's turn up the width a little bit more. Let's just hear it. Here how the piano feels like it gets a little bit wider, just kind of spreads out a little bit. This is a wonderful thing. Thing about stereo imagers, you want to use them subtly, okay? So now that we've kind of quickly dialed this in, and this was quick, believe me, we could fine tune this if we want. I'm just going to shut all the plugins off. I'm going to turn them off, turn them all back on. So you could hear the accumulative effect of what's going on here. So here's what everything we've done so far. Right, we took a dull recording, a well-recorded thing that we said, yeah, it sounded pretty good when we first listened to it at the beginning of the video. And look what we did. Just by using a handful of these plugins, and we could have done a lot more, and we could have fine-tuned this thing, but just using the virtual console collection and the 4KB for the most part, we got something that sounds really good. And then you throw in all this nice little flavor stuff that we did on the master bus, you have something that sounds really good. And we only spent maybe 30 minutes or so doing this, okay? So... This is the power of these plugins. And again, I've been using these for years. So again, if you wanna learn more about how to use these plugins and how to emulate that analog workflow, you cannot get a better bundle than the Slate Digital Complete Access with their plugins along with now all of these wonderful SSL plugins. And we've only scratched the surface of these SSL things. And here's the other thing about the SSL. Uh, plugins, if you happen to have their plugin controller, the UC1, you have now real tactile feel where you don't have to use a mouse to control the plugins, which are really cool. And I have videos on the channel to talk all about that and show that in great detail. So I hope you found this little, uh, little mixing demonstration helpful for the Slate Digital Complete Access Pass along with the SSL native stuff all in one big bundle here. Again, click the link in the description box below to go out to Slate Digital's website to learn more. And if you're watching this between November 20th and November 28th, 2023, make sure you sign up for the Complete Access Pass during Black Friday so you can lock in your price forever and the price will never go up and you can get this wonderful deal. You'll never find it cheaper. If you're watching after November 28th, you can still get the Complete Access Access Pass, and you can get these two bundles put together, but it may cost you a little bit more. I don't know what the pricing is going to be, so I want you to go out to Slate's website so you could check that out for yourself. And again, if you want to learn how to use these plugins in the most effective way, make sure you go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, check out all the training courses I have on my website. If you have any questions, you can email me through there. So thank you so much for joining me here today for this little mixing demonstration. I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.